Hey there, puzzlers! My name is Flip, and today we're going to be covering a wonderful puzzle from this year's Dash. Now, Dash is a day long puzzle hunt that takes place every year, and it stands for a different area, same hunt. The idea is that you take a small team, three to five people, and then solve puzzles at a given location. One puzzle per location. Since Dash is a puzzle hunt, this is a puzzle hunt puzzle, and it has an answer that is an English word or phrase. Now, it consists of a couple different pieces here. There are these five pages. The first two pages are the same, and they have what looks like some sort of logic puzzle on them. And then we have these other three pages, which have some strange diagrams and some strange symbols. And then we have these six different pieces here, which look like they've been cut from cardboard. Uh, they, they have a number of symbols on them, and sometimes letters. You may notice some whiteout on these pieces. That's not part of the puzzle. That's just white out that I put on to cover up some pencil marks from the first time that we solved this puzzle. Now, it's a little confusing to print this on your own, but you can. And the reason is because this year's Dash did something really neat, which is that every puzzle was something that led to a new discovery. So solving them out of order wasn't always something that was possible. Now this one you can solve without solving the other puzzles in the hunt, and I've bundled together the pieces and the second puzzle into a single PDF. And I've put a link to the Dropbox where that is in the description below. Okay, without further ado, let's get solving. When solving a puzzle hunt puzzle like this, which is designed for a small team, it's often gonna be different parts that you can solve in parallel. So let's start out by just reading what the flavor text here says. It may give us some hints on what to do. If you read the paragraph, we're looking at these different pieces, we're getting symbols, and we're translating the symbols. That's sort of a summary of how this puzzle is going to work. Now, if we're just looking at this page, there's a few things going on here. We see there's this, what looks like a set of rules for a puzzle here, and then we have a, two sets of puzzles over here with some symbols on them. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, this puzzle may look very familiar to you because these are the rules of star battle, but it's just with one star, not with two stars. Rather than solve those on the video, I'm just going to fast forward through my solve of this because I've already solved two star battles on this channel, and I've put a link to the star battle videos in the description below. So let's do this. Okay, now that both of these are solved, we have some symbols here, one in each column, and some arrows that point down to these squares. So I'm just going to copy the symbols over. You may notice during this, these are the same symbols that are on the actual cardboard pieces. Okay, well now that we have those symbols, this page is pretty much done. There's not much more we can do on it. And the second page is the same as the first, so we're just going to put these to the side for the moment. Now, we have three other pages of this puzzle and we still haven't so much as touched these cardboard pieces. These three seem to go together just because they have the same sort of symbols and diagrams on them. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. First, the symbols here are the same symbols that were on the first two pages, and they're also the same symbols that are on the pieces. The pieces also are the same shape as those outlines. Each one of them has a sentence followed by some sort of description. And then we have this sentence here. I've already deciphered these characters. They translate to workday. It seems like the other character sequences also represent eight-letter words. There's an underlined part of each sentence. That's a crossword clue for an eight-letter word. Now, what does this mean that this translates to workday? Well, let's see if we can find those symbols on the actual pieces. We already have some letters filled in, like this W here. But what if we tried to find an O? There's an O here. Can we make this go further? What if we tried to find an R? Well, here's an R, and these two could fit together like this. Now that these two are together, you can see that symbol is actually the same symbol that we have on the sheet. But what if we continue to spell workaday? Well, here's an A, there's a D, and there's an A and a Y. That completes workaday. And these symbols, if you follow this around this way, are the same symbols that we see here. And in fact, with the remaining two pieces that we have, we can make that first symbol 
and that last symbol. Just like this. And now I hope you can see that this shape here is exactly the same shape as the tiles. So this tells us exactly what we're doing. We're using these definitions to find eight-letter words, and then translating them using these tiles. Now it looks like we're, we're sort of ignoring part of the first to last character, so have to be careful about that. And note that each one uses a different position as well, so you're always going to be rearranging the tiles. Now, when you were doing this in the actual competition, what would happen is you sort of go back and forth. For example, you might get the definition of unknown individual and these glyphs, but not be able to get the next one. But by getting partials of these, you can get the full set. So what I'm going to do is show you how one more of these works, and then I'm just going to tell you what the rest of the answers are. And I'm going to fill in the letters and the pieces. This is just for the sake of time. They're all pretty much the same. So these characters seem to represent an unknown individual. So we need to have a word for an unknown individual that's eight letters. That's stranger. Now let's see if we can find these pieces. For example, this piece here we know has to have two symbols. It has to have this symbol and one of those two at the right place. So if we orient pieces this way, it needs to have one of these symbols right there. There's only one piece that does, which is this one. So this one is that piece that's going up to the upper right there. That also tells us this here is an E. That's the second to last letter. Now we need a piece that has this bottom part here and one of these two symbols, with that bottom part being the symbol in the upper right here. Once again, then there's only one piece that has that, which is this one. So that must be a G. Now we're looking for this symbol and one of these two in the right position. Once again, there's only one piece that fits there, and it's an A, just as we expect. I forgot to write this in, but this one is an N. <coughs> Filling in the last two pieces, we can now spell out the full phrase. Stranger. And it seems like we're ignoring the first and the last characters. So by doing things like this, we can get all of the letters on these pieces. Just to go through all these definitions, regarding with appreciation is admiring, seen briefly is glimpsed, an induced stupor is sedation, a banister is a handrail, sparkling is glittery, split up is separate, and then you have this last one which doesn't have a definition. So we're going to take a look at this now. This one says these characters seem to indicate the way to interpret the characters generated by the grits. And we have a series of characters here. So let's put it all together. If you put together the characters in that shape and read what it says, ignoring the first two characters as we've done for all of the other clues, it says asterisk. So asterisk is the way that we have to interpret this initial grid solution. So we have a bunch of symbols here, and we have the word asterisk. And we just need to put those two together to get the final answer. Well, what could it mean? So we have the phrase asterisk, we have these six pieces, and we also have the symbols generated by that first page of the puzzle. Now asterisk is supposed to tell us how to interpret these characters. Well, it's probably cluing a shape. How could we make an asterisk shape with these pieces? Well, if we do something sort of like this, that looks a lot like an asterisk. So how can we figure out how to go around an asterisk like this? Well, we do have these symbols. So why don't we try to fit those symbols into place? If you arrange it like this, you can now read all of the symbols all around the center. Ignoring the first and the last character, as we always do, you can read S-T-A-R-S-A-L-I-G-N, or stars align, which is the answer to this puzzle. I really like this, the way that this puzzle used separate parts. It really seemed like it was designed for a team to solve, and not just an individual. And that's important in these team-based competitions. 
Some things that help it do that is it had multiple parallel parts, along with having a puzzle that required multiple pieces to put, be put together, so multiple people could be looking at them at the same time. As I said at the beginning of this video, Dash did something very interesting this year, where all of its puzzles sort of built off of each other. There was another puzzle later on in the competition that used these same pieces with the letters that you fill out in this puzzle. I'm going to be showing you that next week. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. And as always, happy puzzling.